right, so welcome back to Studio 39, a.k.a. The Bear Cave. I'm Rob Odie. This is Spotlight 39, just like we do every time. We got another young man with another story to share. But before we get into that, please hit that subscribe button. Turn your notifications on. Comment down below. Just tell us what you think. You know, let's continue to blow this thing up, man. Let's get these kids the, the looks and the exposure that they truly deserve. Now that that's out the way, man, let's have some fun. Tell us who you are, where you're from, what you do, and we'll go from there, my man. Well, my name is Dr. Richardson. I'm from Tallahassee, Florida. I play football at Miami Central High School. So, yeah. Class, class of 22, right? Yes, sir. Class of 2022. And then what's the what's the position? I play left tackle. Okay, so we play left tackle, class of 22, out of Miami, right? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So, um, so you were, uh, being in Florida, you were fortunate enough to have a football season this year, right? Yes, sir. Definitely. Cool, man. So if you don't mind kind of me, uh, you know, taking me back a little bit, walk me through a little bit of how your season went individually. Uh, so I was at, I was at Tallahassee at, at Tallahassee. I was in Tallahassee, Florida. I was playing for school Gabby. My sophomore year I transferred because, um, Miami Edison, I went to Miami Edison when I transferred to, when I was transferred to Miami. I came to Miami Edison and I played football over there. I played left tackle for them at Miami Edison. It was, they wanted me and I wanted to move too. So okay. me and my dad, me and my dad took took the opportunity. We left and it paid off. Like, so we, so we packed up and moved from Tallahassee to, to Miami? Yes, sir, definitely. To play some football, man. I like it, man. That's, uh, that's pure passion and dedication right there. So- yes, sir. For the season itself, um, did you did you play uh, in Miami this year, or were you still in Tallahassee? I played I played in Miami this year. Okay, so how did how did the season go for you? What the what was the record? You know what went well, all that good stuff. Uh, we definitely we fell short to a team called Shamanad Shamanad a rivalry class of three A. We fell short to them. Okay. And round in round three, but we went six and one. Not a disappointing season, not a bad season at all. We we definitely went through adversity. We overcame adversity. We fought. We did a bunch. We did a bunch of good stuff. I I'll, I'm not disappointed at all from this season. I learned Great. a lot from this season. Like so, I'm not so we mad learned at all. a lot, right? Yes, sir. Definitely. So let's let's talk about some of those things that you learned, right? So obviously, you know, there's no perfect season. Uh, so what are some mm -hmm. things that you know you recognize as some things that could have gone a little bit better for you, you know, individually? You know, and what are your focus areas during the off season to prepare for your senior year next year? I definitely can say controlling my emotions because I put my emotions in the game so much. I, emotions can cause you to do a lot of dumb things by just thinking out of emotions instead of thinking with a clear head, straight head. I That's definitely can say I could control my emotions. I, I definitely could saying saying some words and stuff on the football field and thing, football field and stuff. You know, trash talk. You get you get a flag, not a flag, yeah, a flag, yeah, it's your thing. Yeah, you get a flag called on you and stuff, and so just overall watching the emotions, right? Yeah, trash okay. talking and stuff. The refs, the refs would definitely call it. They'll call <laughs> okay. it every time. They'll All call right. it every time. So, uh, so let's let's flip that, right? So let's uh, let's think about you know some of your your strengths, right? So if I were to talk to you know whether it be your coaching staff or any. Anybody that's in your corner, you know, helping perfect your craft, right? What would those individually individuals say that are some of the the key factors, you know, to make you who you are, you know, compared to the guy beside you? They'll definitely they they would definitely say strength, quick feet, athleticism, uh, lengthy, um, tall, move fast, get out there fast, climb up to the second level fast, able to hit the back there, pick them up real quick. And definitely able to cover grounds on the speed rushes and stuff. Okay, okay. So, so big bodied overall, right? So you got big body, and you got you got the wheels to go with it. Yes, sir. Fantastic, my man. So, um, have you been involved in any showcases, any combines, anything like that uh, during this uh, off season? Uh, no, sir, not right now. I've just been in the weight room, but definitely on um, March seventh, I got a big camp coming up. It's a it's a all American Under Armour camp. It's gonna be a lot of people out there. It's a, it's a big time camp. It always happens every year. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's, you got the that's invite to the camp. the All American uh, camp by Under Armour. Yes, sir. Okay, so that that's pretty prestigious, right? That's invite only. You can't just sign up and say, "Hey, I want to come show out." You got to catch yes, that sir, invite definitely. to to yeah. you know, so they know you're ready to show out, right? 
Yes, sir. Definitely. Okay. So, so I wish you nothing but the best there. Cause obviously there's gonna be a lot of looks, a lot of exposure, you know, in the building for that one, uh, as it is every year. So congratulations on the invite and, um, Appreciate it. let's do this, man. Let's, uh, let's talk about how the, how the classroom is, uh, treating you, or should I say how you are treating the classroom? What's your grades looking like? Uh, grades are perfect without the grades. You ain't, you're not going to college. Coach is going to look past you. You can have the size. You can have, you can have everything. You got, you can have all the tools in a, in a bag, but without the grades, you're not going nowhere. They're going to, they're going to overlook you. They're going to, next they going next they ain't finna look at you the classroom is definitely good classroom is definitely good that's where they need to be no uh i didn't take the uh sat sct yeah because of covid and stuff but okay. i'm definitely gonna take it next month and i'm gonna pass it i know okay. i feel good about it okay okay so so everything's in line right uh yes, so Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the recruiting process. Uh, you know, how is it going for you? At what point did it start? You know, and like I said, you can share as much or as little as you want. You know, it's kind of open for you to uh, to talk about. So I had um, so I got invited to an Under Armour camp when during the summer this year, during the okay. summer uh, last year. I mean, last year I got invited to an Under Armour camp. So before I went to that camp, I only had one offer, and that was Family University. That's a school in Tallahassee, Florida. That's that's a that's big time HBCU. It's a good school. Yeah, absolutely. But I had I had one offer going into that um camp. I went to that camp, showed out, just everybody acknowledging me and stuff. They saying um he he showed a he showed a power five ability. He showed this. He showed that. He showed this. Quick feet, athleticism. He definitely showed that. So everything, everything was recorded. It was, everything was laser, the 40, the ladder drill, everything, like everything was laser. L okay. drill, vertical jump, broad jump, everything. So, and they recorded everything. So all the college coaches was able to see that. And I showed out, I went to that camp, showed out. And that's when I got an offer from Tennessee University. Okay. So, we, so, picked, so I picked, we picked up a major power five out of the SEC. Yes, sir. I got an offer from Tennessee University. And then, like, the next day, F, uh, FAU hopped on. FAU got on it. FAU hopped on the train. FAU, FAU offered me a school in um, yeah, a school in Boca Raton. Okay. They offered me. Then, after that, Florida State came on. School in Tallahassee, Florida. Yes, My sir. dream school, personally. FSU was my dream school. Then that's when um, South Carolina hopped on. South Carolina was a big pickup. Then as you can see, ASU, okay. then Maryland, then Kentucky, Kentucky right there, West Virginia, and then so we and, so we got pennants for for each program that that's reached out, right? Yes, sir. I definitely, that. I gotta I get that man. I gotta that, get I gotta get some more. I gotta yeah, get man, some look, more. That shows love to the programs that that you know want you to be a part of what they got going, man. So. So hopefully, you know, some of those coaches will put some eyes on this video and, and you know, get to know, you know, that, that you are serious about this recruiting process. And it's not just, you know, an offer offer thing and, you know, a Twitter thing, right? Because, you know, obviously you catch that offer, you post it on Twitter, you're going to blow up, right? You're, you're going to get, you know, every Florida State fan in the in the building going to come on and say, hey, you know, come be a Seminole, right? And then same way with all the other programs. So the fact that you took the time to to, you know, gather pennants and, and put them on your wall, man, really uh, shows respect to the programs that, that, that show respect to you. So, so I appreciate Definitely. it. I'm sure they do the same. So, um, Definitely. you know, if you don't mind asking me asking, you know, you said it was at the Under Armour, right? So when the coaches started reaching out to you, was it on social media or did they come to you direct, come to your coaches? What did that look like? Uh, since it was, the dead period was still going on, you know, the NCAA dead period. Oh yeah. The, so they wasn't able to come to me person. They wasn't able to come to me. They wasn't able to contact their phone. They wasn't able to call your phone. They wasn't able to text you on social media because it was the dead period. Because um, when September 1st came, that's when they looked at the dead period. So co college, that's when college coaches was able to send you, they was able to send you graphics, able to call sure. you, able to text you, able to do all that. Yeah, yeah. But then at that point in time, they had to come to the coaches. They came to the coaches, like the head coach, your position coach, the, my office and line coach was my dad. Okay. So they came, they came to him, telling him, oh, we want to offer your son and stuff. 
and everything. So that he would have to let me know because I can't I can't get on the phone with them because oh, yeah, for sure. It was a violation and they yeah, can yeah. lose their job like that. So NCAA you want to jump right that. Yes, sir, definitely. So they'll come to him, tell him, he'll tell me, I'll post it. And then when September first came, that's when we was able to get in contact. I was able to say their numbers, able to get on the phone with them. And just that's that's when it really started happening when September first came. Very cool, my man. So look, I appreciate you sharing that. Like I said, you know, it was pretty open to to whatever you wanted to share. So I appreciate you kind of giving us a little more detail. Um, because it's always interesting to see how the process starts. You know, I've had young men on here with uh, you know, zero blessings still looking for that first. And, you know, it's always good for them to be able to network and kind of see, you know, how others, you know, that have multiple blessings, you know, really got started. And then, you know, I have young men like yourself that have, you know, a handful or, or more, you know, blessings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just, it's very interesting to see how that process works. So I appreciate that. So uh, mm -hmm. let's do this, man. Let's, let's jump away from the whole student athlete piece, you know, cause obviously we can watch your film, you know, we can look at the pennants, you know, beside, you know, behind you, you know, we can see the Twitter. We, we know what's going on as a football player, right? But uh, yes, what sir. we can't necessarily see is who you are as a person. And I think that's uh, probably the most important segment of this whole show. And it's a great opportunity mm -hmm. for you to, to share with, you know, potential coaches who you are outside of the game, right? So yes, who is Daughtry outside of the game? What are you involved with? What do you, what do you like to do? Do you do any community and, you know, involvement stuff? You know, what, I'll what say, do do? I'll say, I'll say Daughtry is a funny kid. He's a funny, humble kid. He's a funny kid. He'll talk to anybody. He'll 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 vibe with anybody. He don't he don't dislike nobody. He I'm not Hollywood. I text I text everybody back. I'm not that Hollywood dude. I, I don't forget where I come from because I was just a kid running around with zero offers playing football, grinding to get an offer, begging to get an offer and stuff. I never I never say I'm Hollywood. I never say I'm above my people because we still grinding. We we trying to sign a million dollar bonus. We want to go. We want to go to. We trying to go all the way. Yeah, so for like, sure. I'm still, I'm still grinding with the same boys I was with. I'm still chilling with the same guys I was get was with. It's like Dachi is a funny person. Outside of football, his personality is awesome. He played. I play games. I play games. I'm, I'm a kid. I'm 16. So exactly. I, I'm a kid. I go out. I have fun. But it's just when it's time for football, that's when it's, it's serious. Like it's business, it's a straight, straight business on the field. But like I saw the football, I'm a I'm a funny kid. I'm a cool kid. I'm a, I'm not I'm not a kid that anybody can hang around, talk to, anytime. Even though I'd be busy a lot, but I'm definitely I'm definitely a down to earth guy to talk to go. all the time. So you'll be a natural fit in any any program's locker room for sure, man. So natural yes, born. Sir. Natural born fit, obviously, you know, with that personality and being very humble, you know, the leadership aspect is going to follow. Right. So so folks are going to, you know, look to you as being a leader on the team. And, you know, I think that you certainly have that capability. So, again, I appreciate you taking the time, you know, out of the day to jump on with me and, uh, you know, kind of share your story. And if you don't mind, I'm going to close it out with the same question I do every time. And that question yeah. is what motivates and what drives you to want to wake up tomorrow? and be that much more successful than you were today? I definitely say my um, my old girl, my mama. My old girl passed away when I was 15. Last year, she passed away when I was 15. I'm sorry to I hear definitely that. Say she, she, uh, I definitely say she's my motivation. She's my she's, she's the reason I go so hard. She's the reason I want to take care of my sisters, my family. She's the reason I want to go drop 50K, give it to my sister, and tell her to go be do whatever she want to do with it so she she's the reason i go hard every day every rep every second of the day hard in the classroom football field anything i do because and 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 like there's winners and losers when it comes to competitive sports and i'm not a loser i like to win all the time i'm there you not go. a loser I, I can't lose but she's the reason she's the reason i she's my motivation she's definitely my motivation every day I know, I know she's smiling from above. I know she's... All right, man, the floor is yours. All right. So definitely, my, my mother is the reason I drive hard, the reason I go hard. And I, I could definitely say my dad, too, because, like, like I said, he's, the office, he's my office and line coach. He's my father and my coach. So it's my old girl is definitely the reason I go hard because I know... She never give up. She never gave up. She she had five kids. She never gave up. She took care of us. She never gave up. Like 
Never. So I never seen her fail. So I won't fail. There you that's, go. That's how it is. Look, man, I can I can see the passion in your eyes. I can hear it in the voice, yeah. man. You know, you you most certainly are going to make her proud uh, every single day. Continue to do what you do. Uh, I appreciate you jumping on and sharing your story. You know, as long as you've got, you know, as long as you've got that, you know, deep down inside, which you'll never lose, you're always going to be successful. And she's always going to be smiling down on you. So, uh, so keep doing what you do for the subscribers out there. This is exactly why we do it, man. Everybody's got a story to share. And I think everybody's story can impact somebody in a positive way. So please continue to blow this thing up and continue to share it on all your social media. I appreciate your time, my man. Stay safe, stay healthy. I'm Rob Odie. This was Spotlight 39. Until next time, we'll talk, all right?